Today, we're going to continue from last week in the second part of how to speed up your Windows 10 PC. Stay tuned. This video is a continuation from last week's video. If you haven't seen it, I recommend watching that one first. I'll put a link in the cards here as well as in the description below. Like I said in the last video, slow computers are a drag. Not only a drag to use, but a drag on your finances with upgrading or replacing them. In the last video, I gave you a couple of tips that were free and a couple others that cost a small amount. But today, I'm going to give you four tips that will literally cost you no money at all. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I have a bonus tip for you. The first tip is to keep your system updated. Not only does Windows Update provide you with security updates to keep your computer secure, but it also provides performance enhancements to the Windows operating system itself. Windows Update in Windows 10 works a little bit differently than in past versions of Windows. Not only does it provide you with regular security updates, but Windows 10 is what you would call a rolling release. Twice a year, Microsoft releases new builds of Windows 10. These new builds come with minor as well as major revamps to the way Windows 10 works. If you were forced to upgrade your PC from Windows 7 recently, this type of rolling release will stop that in the future. Because essentially, twice a year, you are upgrading to a new version of Windows. Once several years have passed, you will be using a completely different operating system than what you started with. Windows should automatically keep your computer up to date. However, it wouldn't be a bad idea to check to make sure this is working. Click on your start menu and hit the little gear icon right above the start button. Then click on update and security. Finally, click on check for updates button. If this runs with no errors, then you should be fine. If you do get an error, it's important that this problem gets solved because as long as your computer is not being updated with regular updates, you're not going to be able to take advantage of performance enhancements as they are released. I maybe do a video in the future covering how to solve common Windows update problems. The next step is deciding which programs automatically start with Windows. Lots of performance can be gained by stopping programs from starting with Windows. This is especially true on slow computers. Lots of programs nowadays seem to come with background services that start up with Windows. Some of these programs we may only use occasionally or never. For these, I would recommend disabling the startup service or even uninstalling the program in some cases. To kill a program from starting up with Windows, right click on the start menu and select Task Manager. From the tabs on the top, select Startup. Now, go through this list and disable the programs you want by selecting the program and pushing the Disable button at the bottom right. Repeat the last step on each program you would like to disable. It wouldn't be a bad idea to restart your computer at this point. Once your computer is restarted, I would launch the app that you disabled and then close it again, then repeat the steps above to make sure that the app is still disabled on Startup. Many programs will re-enable their startup functions when the program is used. If this happens, you may have to go through the specific program itself and find a way to disable it. If a way is not provided, you might consider uninstalling the program. For programs that you never use that you simply want to uninstall, click on the Start button and type Control Panel. Select the Control Panel from the list. Now, go down to Uninstall Program. Select the program you would like to uninstall and then push the uninstall button. Not all programs make your computer slower. Some programs just sit on your hard drive and do nothing unless they're being used. However, other programs have background services that run all the time regardless of whether or not the program is being used. These programs are affecting your performance. Some of these programs only affect your performance by a small amount and others may cause a major hit in performance. The next tip is to make sure your computer is not overheating. Modern computer processors protect themselves from damage by actually slowing the processor down when the temperature of the processor gets too high. This is a great feature because it saves you from having to replace the processor due to damage caused by excessive temperatures. However, this also causes your computer to run slower. There are many things that could be causing your computer to overheat. It could be that your computer was just engineered with a cooling system that simply does not keep the processor cool. This is really common on Apple products. 
This is because they design their products for looks rather than function. Because of this, they have been criticized in the past for substandard cooling systems that cause processors to be in a constant state of thermal throttle. This also goes for you people that use your notebooks on surfaces like couches and blankets. The bottom of most notebooks contain cooling vents that draw fresh air. If you plug these vents, it will cause the notebook to overheat. So you should always use your notebook on a flat surface to avoid this from happening. In other cases, this could be caused by dust that has entered the computer over a period of time. This dust will pack itself into the CPU cooler like pictured here. Let me show you how to remove it. When blowing out your computer, you're gonna need a source of air. I'm using an air compressor here, but you can also use a can of air to do the same job. When you blow air into the fan, make sure that the fan doesn't spin. This could spin the fan too fast and cause damage to the fan, or it could even cause the fan to act as a generator and backfeed power back into the system. It's best to use your finger on the fan like this to hold it while you're blowing air through it. Let me show you how. So just like this, we're gonna hold the fan still as we're blowing air through it. And do the same for all your fans in this case. I used to recommend using a fast food restaurant straw to stick through the blades into the heat sink to stop it from spinning, but unfortunately it's getting hard to find fast food blades nowadays. While you're here, go ahead and blow out the rest of the case while you're at it. There's no point in leaving dust behind. All right, I highly recommend doing this outside because this makes an absolute mess. So you don't want this in your shop or in your home. So anyway, let's get back to the video. The last tip is actually the one that can benefit your performance the most if you suffer from this problem. That's 100% disk usage. This problem affects mostly older computers and way too many of them for it to simply be an anomaly. I have upgraded hundreds of computers to Windows 10 since January when Windows 7 lost support. Many of these computers were actually pretty quick Windows 7 computers, but almost every one of them has been put on its knees due to disk usage issues. One of the conspiracy theories is that Microsoft wants people to purchase new computers. I don't know if that's true or not, but this problem affects a suspiciously high number of computers with very little support from Microsoft on the subject. Pretty much every function the computer performs includes accessing stored data on the hard drive. If your drive is experiencing 100% disk usage, it drags your system's performance down to a crawl. The best way to fix this issue is to simply upgrade to an SSD. Not only does a solid state drive increase your overall system performance, but it also solves the 100% disk usage issue. I recently did a video where I go through 10 steps to solve this problem. I will leave that video here in the side cards as well as in the description below. Windows 10 is a great operating system. It really is possible for older computers to run Windows 10 with decent performance. These tips that I've given you today literally cost nothing. It's definitely worth your time to try before you go out and buy a new computer. Now, for that bonus tip I promised you. If you own a pre-built computer, and this computer originally came with Windows 7 and was upgraded to Windows 10, sometimes it's a good idea to have a fresh install of Windows 10. Upgrading to Windows 10 works great, but I highly recommend removing all of the factory bloatware that comes on your computer before doing the upgrade. There has been a few rare cases where this hadn't happened before, and I had no other choice than to reload Windows 10 from scratch. The first step to do this is to back up all of your data. This is an extremely important step because what you're gonna be doing is completely erasing everything on your computer and starting over from scratch. So make sure to back up your data on an external drive prior to doing this step. Once your data is backed up, go to Microsoft's website and download the Windows 10 Media Creator. From here, you can either create a CD or USB with the Windows 10 install files. Boot your computer from the CD or USB drive and follow the steps to reinstall Windows. I may do a video in the future going into more detail on how to reinstall Windows. If you would benefit from that, leave me a message in the comment and let me know. If this was useful to you, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I release a new video every week. Thanks again.
Not all programs make your computer slower. Frickin' gnats. I have no idea. That right there is why I need to proofread my script when I use voice recognition in order to write it.